Salvador, Axé, Bahia. Hi, Paulo. Hi, Lisandra. We are Hi, running everyone. from one. We are running from one room to the other. Yes. We are just I finished. Could... The... Please go ahead. Oh, I just like to say that I loved the, present, the auto presentation, and uh, I admire admire him so much, and uh, and more one more one a uh, presentation for now round table. <laughs> Yes, yes, we have just finished one keynote talk and now we are going for the second round table of the conference. Uh, would, like, would you like to, to introduce the round table? Yes, I'd like uh, to introduce my uh, the first name, uh, the first uh, name it could be, or you prefer introduce? I, I can, I can introduce uh, um, one of the of our discussants. Um, Sastri Pantula. Sastri, I met Sastri uh, many years ago. I haven't seen him in person or visually for a very long time. It is great that he accepts our invitation to be here. Sastri Pantula uh, is the Dean of the College of Natural Science at California, California State University at San Bernardino. He is uh, nationally and internationally recognized as a leader in statistical sciences. Most recently, he served as the director of the data analytics program at the Oregon State University and a professor of statistics. He has served as the dean of the College of Science for four years at the Oregon State University from August 2013 to August 2017, after serving a three year term as the director for the Division of Mathematical Sciences at the prestigious National Science Foundation in, in the United States. Pantula spent more than 30 years as a statistics professor at North Carolina State University, where he began his academic career in 1982. At uh, North Carolina State University, he also served as the director of the graduate programs, the head of the Department of Statistics and several other uh, positions. In all of his administrative roles, he has focused on enhancing the quality, quantity, and diversity within the department, the division, and the college. His core values are excellence, diversity, and harmony. Strive for excellence, enhance diversity, and foster harmony. He is a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences, and the American Statistical Association. He has served as the ASA president in 2010 and received the ASA Founders Award in 2014. Sastre is a member uh, of the Honor Societies Phi Kappa Phi, Phi, Kappa Phi Sigma Xi, and Mu, Mu Sigma Rho. He is also a member of the North Carolina State University Academy of Outstanding Teachers 
Pantula received his bachelor and master degrees in statistics from the Indian Statistical Institute in Kolkata, in India, and a PhD in statistics from the Iowa State University in the United States. Sastre, it is really a great honor for us to have you here. When I think about leadership, of course, your name is something that comes to mind. So thank you for accepting our invitation. I now pass over the, the word to Lisandra that she will make an introduction as well, as well. Okay, thank you, Paulo. And the first name of our round table is composed by Dr. Wagner Hugo Bonat, researcher and lecturer of the Department of Statistics at Paraná Federal University. He is the head of the Data Science and Big Data Program and a member of the Laboratory of Statistics and Geoinformation. He received his PhD in Mathematics and comp Computer Science from the University of Southern Denmark in 2016. Uh, he is research uh, lies on statistical modeling and estimation functions. Much of his work has been on extending the generalized linear model class to deal with multiple response variables. His main contribution is a new class of multivariate regression models called multivariate covariance generalized linear models. And they associate R package MCGMM. He is an outstanding researcher with uh, important scientific contributions in statistics and data science. He also represents a group of professors who have proposed important innovation for education in this area at the statistics department at the University of Paraná. It's an honor for us to have you here today, Wagner. And uh, uh, lastly, uh, I would like to introduce Patrick uh, Grun Grunman. Uh, Patrick, I have known Pat Patrick for, for quite a long time as well. Uh, we have been in touch in many leading activities as well, especially in the International Association for Statistical Computing. Uh, Patrick Grunman is a professor of statistics at Erasmus St School of Economics in the Netherlands. He's also the dean of that school at the moment. Uh, Professor Gronman's work focuses on data science techniques and their numeric algorithm, algorithms. He is the co-author of several textbooks on multidimensional scaling, published by Springer, and has published articles in top peer-reviewed journals, including, among others, the Journal of Machine Learning Research, the Journal of Marketing Research, uh, Psychological Methods, Psychometrica, the Journal of Classification, Computational Statistics and Data Analysis, the British Journal of Mathematical Statistics, and the Journal of Empire, Empirical Finance. Uh, Patrick has also had many roles in, in leadership positions, as I mentioned, as he was president of the International Association uh, uh, for Statistical Computing, among, among other leading positions. So I think this, uh, uh, the group of these three, three uh, discussants will share a lot of their experience in the future of education in, in um, statistics and data science. So uh, uh, our suggestion was uh, similar as the round table that we organized yesterday. So initially, we will give the word to each of the, of the discussants. They can just give their thoughts or they can also uh, present some slides. And after that, we will open for discussion. Okay, so if you have some questions or some comments or thoughts on this topic, please feel free to write them in the chat, and then we will uh, I will bring them here for 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 our guests to discuss on that. So I I, I will follow the same order; it's just a random order as as we 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 did the introduction. So I will first give the word to Sastre for for his uh, his uh, comments or. If you want to share any 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 slides, you 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 can just uh, uh, do the present presenting in in the in the bottom uh, uh, button. 
Thank you, Paulo. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I really appreciate you inviting me. Uh, Maso, uh, and good morning to everybody. It, it is actually five o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> so Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> It's a pleasure to be with all of you, and I wish I was actually in Brazil. Um, I've been there a couple of times, and I hope uh, with uh, now travel restrictions uh, reduced, I hope I could be there sometime again in the near future. Uh, again, good to see you, Paulo, too. Uh, uh, thanks for staying in touch. Um, I just well, I, I don't have PowerPoint slides to share, but I will kind of give a little bit of overview and then maybe when we come back for the roundtable discussion, go into more of the details. Um, I recall uh, when I was the department head at NC State, um, that is around 2002 to 2010, there was a discussion about starting a analytics program um, around 2005, and it, NC State is connected with SAS Institute, the SAS software program. This is pre-R dates, uh, uh, R program, etc. So the SAS Institute uh, started discussing with us about the analytics program, and by 2007, uh, we actually started a master's in advanced analytics, one of the earliest programs. Uh, in the uh, analytics arena. It is actually combined with business school and uh, then our statistics department and started an MS in advanced analytics. And since then, I mean, the programs have grown all over the place within US and uh, all over the world. And then I recall in 2010, uh, during my ASA presidential talk, I was talking about big data and the applications of big data and the future of data science uh, in my 2010 uh, 10 speech at the joint statistical, statistical meetings. And in fact, I remember talking at the end that uh, the future wars uh, between nations or between various factions will be not about oil or not about water, it will be about data who controls the data. And you can see that happening with uh, whether it is Google or Amazon or uh, Meta and Facebook or Twitter, uh, who controls the data has enormous power in terms of how uh, people can be influenced. You can see that in elections that Brazil just has gone through or uh, US has just gone through, it's very important. Um, Again, 2010 is when I moved to NSF, and that, that's when we NSF, the National Science Foundation, which is the funding arm for research in United States, was starting the big data uh, training for various um, uh, uh, people uh, at various universities. So NSF and NIH, the National Institute of Health, uh, have started investing heavily Harnessing the data revolution is what we call it that time. Uh, and it continues to invest in programs at various universities, both for workforce development, as well as for research in data science areas. So that has really helped in developing a lot of the data science programs within US and since 2007, when it started to now, the number of programs that are offering uh, has exceeded more than 400 programs in data science area. And annually, they're graduating over 60,000 uh, uh, new degrees in whether it is undergraduate or graduate or PhD uh, in data science. So, um, and also what I was noticing is that um, there are some that are programs called data science, some that are called data analytics, and some that are called business analytics. And there are various titles for these, and it also depends, the titles actually connect with which department or which programs are making use of them or offering these degrees. 
for example, business analytics uh, programs are mainly in business school, and they focused on developing managers who will think about how, what type of questions to ask. They're not as focused about actual analysis of it, what data can do, what type of questions that they should ask. So the business analytics programs have developed in uh, various business schools. Uh, even our uh, at CSUSB, we offer a business analytics master's degree. And then in addition to that, say now uh, data analytics is another term that is being used. And those are generate, I mean, offered mainly in computer science type programs, uh, data analytics programs. And then data science programs are more common in statistics and mathematics departments um, within US at least. So those are the three different terms that I'm seeing business analytics, data analytics, and data science, depending upon which departments are offering those degrees. In addition to that, um, even for us, we are offering, say, certificates in data science or certificates in data analytics. These are the certificates that one can get after getting a degree, not necessarily in uh, statistics, but the job market requires some of the certification in the data science or data analytics area. So various universities are offering certificates as well. And these programs are offered by uh, private schools, public schools, and there are several online programs for them making it convenient for people who are working to take these uh, certificates or even degrees. Initially, initially, the data science programs or data analytics programs focused at the master's level. And in fact, the AMSAT News has various articles about two, two year degrees in master's in data science. And each describes what they emphasize at various places, whether it is, say, Carnegie Mellon versus Berkeley versus Cornell versus uh, University of Washington, et cetera depending upon what they emphasize. But then later on, actually, that um, uh, what I'm noticing is that there are a good number of Bachelor of Science uh, degrees in data science as well. But that is something that has started again in the past decade or so, more at the undergraduate level rather than at the graduate level. Again, we can go into more of the details of the, uh, these programs. The future is bright uh, for data science and data analysts uh, because the data have become cheaper to collect. So there is, uh, it is cheaper to store. It, it is easier to access. So there's going to be more and more demand for data scientists in the future. And that's part of the reason why various statistics departments, computer science departments, and business schools in the US are investing heavily in this direction. So let me pause there and I'll come back uh, later on to talk about some specifics as, as we see fit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sastri. We now uh, pass over the word to Wagner to say some, some words. Um... Yeah, thank you, Paulo, for this invitation. I prepare some slides because I think it's easier for me to introduce the, this discussion using some slides. So I will share my screen Please let me know if you can see uh, it right now. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet, just a minute. Okay, now I think you can see. It, it's it's okay? It is here, yes. Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, so thank you, Paulo, for this invitation. It's a great pleasure to me to be part of this uh, round the table about the future of education and statistics in the data science. So I prepared just a few slides that uh, to introduce myself and of course to uh, give some thoughts about this uh, round table, the future of education. So I'm Wagner Bonat. I'm working here in the University Federal of Paraná. I, I have been teaching statistics for around 12 years. So. I am a statistician and uh, I have a PhD in mathematics. So I 
I'm doing this kind of uh, data analysis for some time. I have some experience and probably the one that I would like to highlight here in this round table is that I am the head of the program data science and big data here in the University Federal of Paraná. So we created this program uh, around five years ago and uh, we have been working on it. And uh, I also have been working with a lot of uh, companies like a uh, researcher or a consultant. So I, I have also uh, some experience in, in the uh, standard uh, working market. So I, I know what people are doing and what uh, the companies are uh, using in terms of uh, data analysis tools. So the first thing that I, I would like to uh, discuss in this round table is that uh, we are here discussing the future of education in statistics and data science. And uh, sometimes people think that the statistics and data science is like uh, the same thing or the same field, but uh, it's not true, in, uh, at least in my opinion. And of course, uh, we are here for discussing this. And uh, I think uh, many programs in statistics, at least in, in Brazil, have been using this uh, new kind of uh, popularity of data science to become their programs more popular or to try to attract more young people for these uh, courses like uh, the, the, uh, the, the course of uh, statistics. So uh, here in my university, we have uh, a bachelor degree in statistics and in general, we don't have a lot of people looking for this course. So one of our idea was just try to make it our course more attractive for young people, introducing some kind of uh, data science techniques or change the names or things like that. But uh, what is true is that uh, we have a new field. Data science, is, data science is a new field. It's not just the statistics as we used to teach uh, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And here I just uh, bring some uh, main topics that I think uh, we have to distinguish between these two areas. And so in general, in statistics, we are really focused on modeling, like uh, we are doing uh, the standard science. Well, in the other side, in data science, we are in general dealing with uh, business pro problems. So we are not so focused on science in the sense that we are trying to prove hypotheses or test hypotheses, but we are just trying to uh, bring some kind of uh, value from uh, data. So that's that's the the main idea here for the data science and of course it has a lot of uh, implications when we uh, talk about uh, training programs or graduate programs in data science and in statistics so uh, another uh, challenge that we have when we deal with data science is also uh, the kind of data that we try to analyze so in general in, in standard statistics we are used to deal with uh, uh, structured data it's think about this like a table of uh, uh, data where we have columns with our uh, variables and then we have uh, a lot of uh, observations but uh, when we move to data science we have a lot of different types of data like uh, unstructured data like uh, we have this we have sounds we have movies we have images so it's not the, the usual one for statisticians so uh, it also has some kind of implications for how we train the data scientists. And uh, another thing which is really interesting here and that I am facing this challenge now is that in general in statistics, we are not concerning about uh, uh, create products or data products. And when you move to data science, we we have this idea to, to, to deliver a uh, a data product, something like a software that uh, inside it you have uh, a lot of data in a lot of, of uh, uh, statistical analysis or data analysis in general. So in general, the statisticians are not really uh, interested in, in build uh, software, but when we move for data science, uh, in general, we have to, to build software somehow. And of course, it has some implications how we training and which what we teach for these uh, new data scientists. So here I, I just uh, have some challenge for 
statistics and data education. Of course, uh, data science is a new field, uh, somehow new field, and uh, it's an interdisciplinary field. And so it means that we have a lot of people uh, uh, involved in this field. And it is a challenge because you have a lot of uh, different people to talk with and um, how everybody will understand everything together. So it's it's a challenge. Uh, so we have to think about this, uh, like uh, conceptual comprehension, cognitive load in the sense that we have a lot of things to teach for our students and how to do it in the way that they can understand and apply it in the real world. Uh, of course, there is some part of here of skills, not, not only technical skills, but of, of course, no technical skills, ethics on the use of the data, and also research skills, everything in data science uh, requires some kind of uh, research skills. And also, the final one is how our students can apply uh, the data uh, tools or the data analytics tools that we teach in the university in real life tasks and how can learn new things by themselves without returning to the university for learning new things. So that's that's one uh, one or two challenges here that I, I think is quite important to discuss when we talk about uh, statistical education and data science education. And the last one, and that I think it's uh, perhaps uh, the most uh, uh, difficult uh, challenge here is the data science teacher. So we don't have uh, real data scientists yet in the sense that uh, we have a few uh, graduate programs in data science. And so what we have, our teachers are basically or statisticians or mathematicians or computer scientists or people from business and things like that. So no one is a, a real data scientist yet. So, uh, and of course, many people, different people understand data science in different ways and teach it in different ways. And so there is a no kind of a standard for data science teacher, what we expected from a data science teacher. So it's also, I think it's a, a challenge for, for the future of uh, data science and statistics education. Here I just bring a, f a phrase from this uh, Monica, it's a CEO of a Turing School, and basically he, she talks about the demand for data scientists, and uh, he, uh, she has a, a, a really hard uh, phrase here that uh, basically data scientists have never been more in demand, but it's really hard to find them. And the supply demand gap is not going away anytime soon. The problem is the academic community struggles to prepare data scientists as it's simply not capable of that. So uh, I think this uh, thought here reflect the, 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 the high demand for data scientists and also uh, how the universities are dealing with it. So what do we need? So in my opinion, we need these three new things here, a new learning methodology, a new teaching methodology, and a way to bridge the gap between education and industry in the sense that what we teach in the university uh, it's, it's not exactly the same or uh, what people are using in industry. And just here, a final thought that uh, although we have a lot of new tools, I still uh, believe that uh, we keep teaching uh, math, probability and statistics, and then we are uh, trying to say that this is data science for our new students. So but that's just a, a kind of um, opinion that I would like to to discuss with our colleagues here. So thank you, Paulo. Uh, that's all for, for my short presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Wagner. I will now um, give the word to Patrick um, so that he can he can make his, his um, opening words. Patrick, please, the floor is yours. So first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me here. Um, this is, I think, the fourth uh, edition of this um, uh, conference uh, series. Um, indeed, Paula and I go back quite a long way, also with our uh, 
efforts, I think, to further uh, data science. And I'm going to mention one of them here, uh, of the uh, uh, one of the initiatives uh, uh, that I've been in, involved right now. Uh, that's what you didn't mention, that I'm currently the editor of the Journal of Data Science, Statistics and Visualization. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm mentioning it also for a purpose because I think these are important issues that go together, uh, important uh, uh, topics. Um, uh, th th there's much that I agree and perhaps also disagree with uh, one of the previous uh, uh, sp speakers of, of, of what Wagner said. So I was uh, listening to, to, to Wagner on uh, Am I now a data scientist or am I not a data scientist? Um, I started my career at a department which was called uh, Department of Data Theory. And <clears throat> in hindsight, I think at that time uh, we were working on, on, on models and on representations that you would now uh, consider to be uh, very much uh, data science uh, oriented. So I think I just claim here that I've been a data scientist all my scientific life. Um, but let me say now something about, uh, say, the, uh, the, the, the curriculum or not curriculum or uh, the, the way we have implemented, um, uh, let's say, um, data science at my, uh, at my school. And I'm going to, to focus on... on uh, two of the programs that we have at Erasmus School of Economics. Um, within our school, uh, there are two main bachelor um, uh, programs. One of them is economics, and it's a broad uh, bachelor uh, in, in economics. The other one is uh, a bachelor in econometrics. Uh, now, there are not many countries, and uh, may even be that uh, the Netherlands is one of the only countries that has uh, econometrics as, as, a, uh, as a bachelor uh, program, historically even, uh, for a long time. And you can s consider that to be somewhere uh, of, of, of a, a strong, with a strong mathematic, math mathematics uh, background, training students to be... Uh, applied mathematicians uh, uh, or applied uh, statisticians. Um, we have two <coughs> master's programs. One again is a broad uh, uh, master uh, in economics and business economics that contains several of the well-known specializations within economics. Um, uh, uh, and there we started one specialization, I think some five years ago or so, um, that is called um, uh, data, data Science and Marketing Analytics. So the entrance there is um, uh, our economists that we've trained, in principle, our economists that uh, have been trained uh, uh, in, in our own bachelor, which has have a reasonable uh, mathematics and statistics background, but not very strong. Um, the other one is a master that follows the econometrics program. Um, there it is called business analytics and quantitative marketing. And I think this also coincides a bit uh, with uh, what Sastri was, was explaining on, on the different types of, uh, um, you, could, you could say, data science uh, or deepness of, of, of data science uh, pr programs. Um, in, 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 the U, in the US. So within the econometric specialization, this is in principle um, much more, I would say, hardcore compared to the economics uh, uh, specialization of data science and marketing analytics. Um, in, <clears throat> uh, uh, in the economic specialization, you could say we learn our students how uh, in a proper way uh, to apply methods to practical problems. Uh, and uh, I think most, most of it is uh, uh, oriented in um, using packages that could be available in R or Python. Uh, whereas if we think about our econometrics uh, students, uh, they are going to do either advanced applications or 
they will develop or extend methods themselves um, and program it and apply it. Um, so that, that, that is essentially uh, the, progr the program. The, the econometric students have been traditionally very high in demand in the Netherlands. Um, <clears throat> that is and partially at uh, research-oriented uh, uh, institutes as academics, uh, academia, but also, for example, if, if, if it's about the f uh, finance um, specialization in, in, in financial institutions uh, uh, and, and so on. Um, the uh, economics specialization of data science and marketing analytics um, is um, indeed very much in demand as well, but at a much more, uh, yeah, I, I would say applied uh, uh, level. There have been, uh, I think it was 2020 or so, uh, that uh, there were five uh, Dutch, large Dutch companies, of which I could remember now four, uh, Booking.com that you may know, Philips, you'll probably know, there was a Dutch, large uh, Dutch uh, supermarket chain and the Dutch railways that expressed that they essentially, that the Dutch economy needs 20,000 data scientists per year. So that's, that's only on the demand side. Uh, and I think they are right. Um, in the meantime, we've seen uh, that, there, that, you know, both uh, uh, computer, uh, computer science um has has been going uh, uh on, on this track uh, and there have been several initiatives also of the colleagues uh, in uh, at other universities to start uh, uh data science um uh specializations like like the ones that uh, uh that that we have um so in in short um i think uh, the demand is huge the trouble is, I think, that indeed what Wagner already mentioned, um, uh, that we might not have enough supply um, uh, at the academic side to uh, d deliver the capacity um, of students that is needed from, uh, uh, from society. Um, one of the problems is, is, is also, particularly if you compare this with, uh, with big tech, um, is as soon as we have educated them, they're gone. They go to industry. Uh, but we need um, trainers to stay within uh, academia to train uh, the, uh, the data scientists that are needed in industry. So I think a cooperation there is, uh, is, is, is also needed. A final remark is that I think there is uh, a need for for at least two areas in data science that uh, probably um, get not sufficient attention at this moment. Um, so I would be also interested to see what Wagner and, and Sestri uh, uh, think about this. One of them being in the area of data ethics, the other one being uh, in the area of uh, data journal journalism. Uh, and we, we, we see, fortunately, um, uh, that is coming up. Uh, sometimes we see very poor examples uh, mm -hmm. in, um, in in journalism, uh, and, and and sometimes very interesting, uh, even, even I would say scientifically interesting, uh, either visualizations or, or uh, reports of, uh, um, of of data uh, in in, for example, in, in news uh, outlets. But let me let me keep it uh, uh, with this for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I just jump in a little bit? Yes, yes, of course. Please go ahead, Sasha. Uh, before you start the questions, I just thought uh, mm -hmm. uh, really appreciated what Wagner and uh, Patrick have said. Um, just thinking about uh, the data science um, as an interdisciplinary program, um, it, it has these components, right? There is statistics, there is computer science, and then there's dom domain knowledge, uh, whether it is in business side or uh, health side or um, um, uh, various, I mean, journalism or um, uh, precision medicine. There are different domain knowledge the pieces. And we're looking at the triangle, the intersection of all of those three, uh, statistics, computer science, and the domain 
our subject specific knowledge. So you're kind of looking at a jack of all trades in some way. And, and, and so the stat departments are focusing on the fundamentals of the statistics and data analysis, interpretation, et cetera, and computer science on the machine learning, uh, the data curation, standardization, retrieval, visualization, all of those aspects. Um, when I say, for example, the business analytics folks would uh, want to know what type of things that you want to gather so that you could, whether it is in the marketing side or uh, how do you kind of convert this data information into useful knowledge so that you could actually make some money out of that That's or make good decisions, whatever it may be. So there are congruence of different groups uh, is coming up about data science. But the important thing for me as a statistician is you have to have strong foundation. You have to have that foundation to build on different things. And, and so the thing that is, is that in terms of while we're developing various programs, whether it is at the undergraduate level or at the master's level, or as Patrick mentioned, we also need people who can train at the PhD level and be in the academia to train the future data scientists. It's important uh, uh, what kind of uh, curriculum that we could offer so that they have the strong foundation, but also are able to communicate with various domains. And that's where I think the st statistics departments that were switching in, over into the data science side are kind of building that relationship, learning about the com computational uh, aspects of it, how to communicate with uh, various fields. So I just wanted to kind of uh, pick up on what Wagner said about the interdisciplinarity and Patrick talked about uh, the training needs. We are looking at the intersection of uh, various fields. And, and so the important thing for me is not to forget the fundamentals. So. Thank you. Sorry, my micro was, was off. Uh, um, thank you, Sastri. Uh, and thank you, thank you, Patrick and Wagner for, for these remarks. I think you you raised a, a lot of very important points that will will help to conduct this discussion. I, I'd like now to pass the word to Lisandra to see if she she has some comments or if she would like to to start with the questions right away uh, hi thank you everyone i'd like to introduce a question for for you um in particular from wagner uh in brazil statistics courses are characterized by low demand and high dropout rates However, the data scientist career has attracted students and different professionals to join the statistics course. What strategies, strategies should the courses, statistics courses, adopt to meet, to meet the expectation of this public and control uh, dropout? Okay. Um, so thank you for the question, and that's a very interesting question. So here in University Federal of Paraná, we have been changed our curriculum for our Bachelor in Statistics. We are trying to change our name for Statistics and Data Science, but uh, there is a lot of uh, regulations that uh, that's not so easy to just change the name of a course because uh, there is regulation for uh, the Education Ministry and there is also uh, organization of the professionals. So who will uh, like say that uh, we accept a data scientist? So we have a, a organization of statisticians that uh, will have this uh, organization that uh, basically you you are part of a, a statistician, then you can work like a statistician, but there is not, there is no similar organization for data scientists at least I, I don't know if if you have something like that so what we are doing is just we are changing our curriculum to include more uh technological tools like data visualizations um uh, databases uh basically of uh, software engineers and uh, 
things like that in, in the curriculum of our uh, Bachelor in Statistics. The idea is to make our curriculum more attractive for people that want to work uh, like data scientists. Uh, however, we still keep the, the basic back, background on probability and statistical inference. So that's that's what we are doing. One question that I would like to, to let here for our discussion is that I completely agree agree with Sastri when he said that uh, we need to to give a good uh, mathematical background for our students. However, my question is, is, is if uh, everyone that is going to work with data analysis need this kind of uh, mathematical background, because I have seen a lot of uh, people doing data analysis without any mathematical or not any, but let's say uh, um, just low level of, of uh, mathematics and statistics background doing data analysis softwares that use data uh, as the main input um, and they are just doing it and uh, one thing that I see in our in our programs here is that uh, the main reason for dropout is the strong uh, probability and mathematical background that we we somehow put to our students in the, the, the very first beginning of their uh, bachelor program. And so the question is, we have to keep doing this way and lose a lot of uh, perhaps good in students that could go to, to, to work as a data scientist, or we should somehow change it, but I don't know how to change it. So it's, it's just a question. It's a, it's, I, I don't know how, how, how to explain it in a better way, but uh, the idea is, do everyone need a, a strong mathematical and statistical background to work as data scientists? May, may I give a remark to this? Yes, uh, Patrick, let, let, let me just uh, um, put together. I think those are two very important points that Lisanne and Wagner raised. So maybe maybe you 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 and Sasser can also comment on dropouts. Are there are you aware of dropouts in the, the BSc in statistics, for instance, in, in the place that, that you are familiar with? And also what, what Wagner raised that, that the, is is really is there really a need for this strong uh, probability uh, inferential mathematical background for all data scientists yeah just just to include one more question Please. is how it is important for the one that you go into data analysis so for example think like uh, exercising probability that demands a lot of uh, mathematical tricks i have been uh, seen a lot of uh, probability teachers proving a lot of theorems that need a lot of mathematical tricks. How this is important for someone that going to analyze data in real life, in big company techs and things like that. That's, that's, that's my, my main point now. Um, if, if, I, if I may, may remark to, uh, to this, uh, it's, I think exactly, uh, um, sort of, uh, in, in between uh, perhaps uh, uh, Wagner and, and Ancestry, in a sense that, uh, yes, I think that certain concepts are vital to know. Uh, and that is the concept of, st I would call that statistical thinking, if you want to do inference. Uh, if somehow you want to do inference, it doesn't matter whether you know statistics or don't know statistics, it will still be there. Um, so that that feeling, do you need you know those all those detailed uh, uh, mathematical tricks in, in in probability to get that understanding? I don't think so. Uh, I think it can be at a uh, at a lower level. Um, and if if I might come back to um, uh, to, to the setup that that we have of what I would call our applied data scientists. They come in with a MSc in in, in uh, sorry uh, with a bachelor in economics, uh, and so they are reasonably trained in, uh, in in mathematics, but they are 
nowhere near uh, the mathematical training that you would get in uh, a mathematics or in a statistical program. Um, so, and, and, can, and still, I think that they can be good um, uh, data scientists. Um, now, Paolo, you brought up the dropout rate. Um, the dropout rate in our master is not that high. Uh, so I don't have the, the exact uh, uh, figures, but it might it will not be a uh, sort of 100% uh, um, uh, of those who enroll uh, will finish, uh, but it might be 90, 95% or so. I would need to, to look that up. If we go back to our program, our bachelor program in econometrics, that is uh, pretty selective. Uh, so... In some years, we had um, um, a success rate in, in the first year of, of, of some 55% or so. Um, and that's okay. You know, if, if, if you don't make it, if you want to be a technical person and, and, and you, uh, you, you don't make it, then do something less technical. That's fine. Just wanted to add uh, just a little bit. Um, I, I remember going to a dentist once and... Um, he was filling my cavity with the drill in my mouth. And uh, he asked me, so what do you do? And I said, um, I teach statistics. And he said, that's one course put me out of being a dentist. And he's drilling my <laughs> tooth. <laughs> so, so the thing that is, is uh, it is important how we teach statistics. I mean, it's important that we show the examples uh, I mean, mathematics is important, but I, my more of thinking is even giving the statistical thinking and the applications, how to use, et cetera, are very important. And again, in this training, it depends on what your ultimate goal is. If, for example, if you are training somebody to use various tools, but not to develop the tools, that's a different training then, but it is important to understand what the tool does and what is the uh, some things behind the tool being developed. But it doesn't mean that you had to go into the deep proofs that everybody needs. So the people who came with the undergraduate econometrics degree or uh, uh, even biology degree could benefit from a bioinformatics master's degree that they could use in terms of uh, uh, how statistics and computational tools can be used in whether it is uh, detecting the genetics, rela DNA related to a particular disease, etc. It's understanding the interpretation of what the results come out. So the thing that I don't want to forget is that, uh, uh, that there are some tools. There are people that are actually being trained for how to use the tools as opposed to developing the tools uh, as well as having some basic understanding so that there's not misinterpretation. This is where the ethics issue comes in as well. But, but my point is, it's not all the mathematical tools. It is about how we teach the statistics to uh, data scientists or statisticians or people use, who use statistics. And we can turn off people. And they, this is where I think the dropout uh, issue comes in. But also, we, we need to be honest. I mean, uh, uh, some things are challenging and, and, and that we need to be expecting, set the bar and m make sure that we are training people to reach that expectation. Uh, that's what I feel. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I would like, before I, I, I move on to, to the, the questions in this chat, there is something that I would like to, to, to ask your opinion about. Um, I, I'm currently in the board of directors of the Brazilian Statistical Association, and we have had regular meetings uh, in a, like a, a committee or from, from that uh, association. We have had meetings with uh, the Brazilian Association for Compute, Computation or for Computing or something like that. Uh, and uh, they, 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 have, they have prepared uh, a proposal for a BSc degree in, in data science. And they had the proposal pretty much finished. We have been contributing and meeting to, 
to discuss in which way statistical and statistical modeling, statistical thinking can be included there. Uh, but uh, 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 this association for computing is much larger than the Brazilian Statistical Association. So they are very well organized. They are very good in marketing. We are not as statisticians, I believe. Um, and uh, this will be proposed under, because it, it, here in the Minister of Education, we have committees. We have the Committee for Mathematics and Statistics, the Committee for Computation, for, I don't know, for Chemistry, etc. And this will be under, uh, almost certainly, the Committee on, of, of Computation or Computational Sciences. Um, although there will be some, this kind of, of interaction between areas. Um, I think what I would like to hear about is uh, in which way can we, can we uh, because of course there is a lot of computer science involved with data science as it, there is a lot of, of statistics, but in which way can we uh, um, uh, uh, negotiate and uh, uh, marketing and uh, organize these courses in a way that we have some kind of even contribution. Uh, do we have any thoughts about that? I, I find that difficult because that's 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 much more of a um, of um, a, in some sense political um, uh, approach um, to get sufficient essentially to get sufficient uh, influence maybe it's sestry who might have most experience there <laughs> yeah because, because let me just compliment because this will affect the program that wagner was talking about they are adapting to be a bsc in statistics and data science and maybe that will affect it somehow so so um, Sassi, i don't know if you have any thought on that as, as patrick put you on the spotlight <laughs> no, I, I, as I was sharing that uh, there are some curriculum guidelines that uh, ASA, the American Statistical Association, uh, has developed uh, both for the data science side and then there are also curriculum guidelines for uh, statistics programs. It's called GAIS, I think, G-A-I-S-E. And I posted the link for the data science undergraduate programs. But also you could uh, see the several of the top uh, undergraduate programs in data science um, and, and just to see what type of things that they are teaching uh, would be helpful. And, and uh, it looks like, uh, in, uh, as Wagner said, uh, there is a lot more uh, red tape involved in approving things uh, in Brazil, whereas uh, the universities here have a little bit um, more autonomy in uh, uh, defining what uh, the degrees are. Um, it, the Statistical Association only provides guidelines, but they're not uh, kind of an authority on uh, who can call it what. Uh, but on the one thing that I have seen uh, at various places that I, I've been um, involved with teaching or developing there's always this competition. Uh, once a statistics department wants to call data science, uh, computer scientists start up objecting, saying that, oh, that's my domain. <laughs> I, I need to be teaching that class, not you. So there are some internal squabbles um, uh, within the universities. Uh, that, that's where uh, I feel like as a, a dean, I have the job responsibility uh, getting the uh, program through, uh, not just leave it to the stat department, but work with the departments to come up with a, a, a good program. And I do rely on uh, uh, ASA guidelines uh, in um, kind of using that as a backup for um, uh, developing the programs. Thanks. That's, I don't know if you'd like to say something on this, uh, Wagner. Well, uh, I think the, the university is, is, is just thinking about itself, how or who can teach something, but uh, that, that's not the real problem, for, at least in Brazil, because we have a lot of other people teaching without any relation with university or education institutions. So 
we have a lot of free courses that uh, claim that they teach data science and uh, and as long as the company does not require a, a kind of a formal education to be a data scientist uh, it's 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 just uh, we are discussing who, which department can teach data sciences but uh, everyone now can teach data sciences and so that's a much bigger problem than the university uh, but but for, for departments of statistics i i don't think uh, they we really change any anything from from this general roles from the computer science because they basically they don't know what they are doing they just include some generic terms about the statistics that we can understand it in the way that we teach our already teach so it will not change anything for us that's that's just my my general opinion so yeah uh, I think we have two different things now. We have to distinguish the statistics from data science and data science from statistics. I think statistics will keep doing the same way that we are doing for years. We are keeping working on hospitals and companies and uh, government in general way. And the data scientists will work in more on um, technology companies and things like that. So of course the statistician can work like uh, data scientists but uh, the other way around i don't think it's it's possible because the statisticians do a lot of uh, different things uh, but uh, for for the, the general curriculum of course we are doing meetings with the computer science association i i don't think they are trying to keep it, the data science for them they just Someone had to do that. They are much bigger than the, the statistical association, and so they are doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, every well, here in the, our university, every every time I talk with the people from computer science, they are much more interested in statistics than we are, because they think we know much more things than they know, and so they they want we contribute to to the, the field, but uh, we are still trying to okay that's something we have to do but that's that's not the way we have to go i think we have to discuss with them and and try to find a, a good agreement agreement for for everyone so yeah thanks wagner um, uh, I'm, I'm maybe i'm sorry to to say but um i'm also a dean and i'm afraid that um uh, that there are, there are other meetings uh that I should have been, I think, about five, six minutes ago in a, in a meeting. Um, so I hope that you can apologize me uh, for doing that. No, thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. We'll continue for about 20 minutes more. Uh, now we'll go to the questions. But thank you very much for, your, for, for being here, for taking time from your busy agenda to, to share, share your thoughts with us. No, it, it is a pleasure. We fully understand. V very happy to, to do that. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. No, now we, we can go to some some of the questions. Um, let me start here uh, with one from um, Everton. Everton is is like a question. Uh, is is uh, somehow talking about how the class are taught? Uh, uh, is asking if there is any case of success in the world where children have been prepared to love numbers, statistical, and not boring class classrooms. I, I, I'll, I'll join together to, to, to make the, the discussion uh, more, more um, interactive. I will put a, another question as well. This is, um, uh, João is saying that statistics and data science can work with uh, multidisciplinary areas. What are your impressions about how educational institutions deal with this characteristic? Uh, and uh, what are your suggestions for the future? So if you could comment on both of those, uh, it would be great. I will take a shot at it. Um, I, I think that there is, a, at least in the United States, there is a, a group, um, uh, you, uh, U.S. Committee on Teaching Statistics that uh, really spends time on um, good pedagogical tools 
uh, of uh, teaching statistics, whether it is at the high school level, the AP statistics course, or uh, bringing the number sense uh, early on to undergraduate curriculum. And it's interesting when you attend this, uh, there's a, uh, uh, I'll put that in the chat, Causeweb, uh, they have wealth of resources uh, about how to teach statistics better in the introductory statistics courses. I mentioned that about intro, intro stat courses because a lot of them take only one statistics course become, before they become a politician or a dentist or a scientist. <laughs> It's very important that they live with a good feeling about the uh, uh, benefits of statistics or when they read the newspaper or um, uh, articles that they understand uh, the meaning of those things. Um, so it's important. And, and I think there are different people uh, in statistics community, statistics education com community have done a terrific job about it. At the same time, the issue is how to get that beyond the choir, other statisticians, other teachers, making use of these good pedagogical uh, tools and uh, uh, active learning methods, uh, et cetera. How it goes to the broader community is still a challenge. And I think that's where uh, we as a profession have much more work to do in preparing our teachers, whether it is high school teachers or undergraduate uh, education, it's very important that they make use of tons of uh, uh, active learning methods and better way of teaching statistics that exists. So that's one point. And I think uh, there are tools, again, I'll put some of them in the uh, chat soon. The other thing about the multidisciplinary uh, programs is always a challenge that um, when whenever each department wants to do something, it is their uh, uh, multidisciplinary programs are always number three for everybody, not number one for anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be number two for uh, statistics, number three for computer science, and uh, um, or for bioinformatics, when it came, for example, bioinformatics, uh, genetics or biology is a number three for them. For statistics, is number three. But if you combine all of them, it should be needs to bubble up to be the number one. Because and that's where I think the deans and the department chairs uh, communicating with each other and not just thinking about their own territory but in terms of seeing how the combined uh, uh, collective science um, that, that actually advances the dis discoveries and multidisciplinarity is where the action will be in actually advancing things. But when I say that, I also want to emphasize one should not forget some of the fundamentals, but we have to give in something. We can't teach everything to uh, everybody at, uh, and have uh, somebody graduate in two or three years. You have to prioritize what are the topics that are important and how we can de develop a good multidisciplinary program. And I'll mention bioinformatics is because that's one thing that when as a department head had to kind of combine uh, people from the genetics area, computer science area and statistics area to develop a master's in uh, bioinformatics and a PhD program when I was at NC State. So I, I think the challenges are there, uh, but I think uh, all of us need to work together in the multidisciplinarity area. So there's better statistics teaching, number sense, and that includes ethics that some of you mentioned, uh, but also about the multidisciplinarity where we need to collaborate with, with other people. Thanks, Sasser. I don't know if you would like to say something, Wagner, or if I should move forward. Yeah. I, I, uh, could you could you show the first question again, please? Yes. It's about the, the classes for Yes, for yeah, that, that's the one. What I think that uh, in Brazil we have a, a really big problem with our uh, teachers in, in high school. Uh, I have 
being noted that uh, the, the, the national curriculum for teenagers and, and child have been changed. And now a lot of uh, 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 statistical concepts has been included, like graphics, um, standard uh, measures like uh, mean, standard deviation and things like that. And also a lot of probability has been included. I have been talking with one of my colleagues just a few days ago, and, and he he noted that uh, well, we have, I think, I think we have uh, 45 questions in our national exam for evaluating the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the high school uh, in Brazil. And eight of these uh, 45 questions are basically on probability and statistics. It, it, it's it's a lot because you can think there is a lot of uh, mathematical uh, concepts in the high school and also in the uh, for, for childs and so we have eight of these 45 questions uh, concerning about statistics and probability and the question was not so easy to to answer even for uh, professors of statistics and so and uh, and we know that uh, uh, the, the the teachers of mathematics, the, uh, they were not trained for teaching statistics, even for, for children. And so we, we have a, a, a kind of challenge in how to fix these problems in Brazil. And uh, one opportunity that uh, I, I think we have is this new, uh, there is a new role that we have to uh, to, to keep 10% of our bachelor programs uh, with, uh, I don't know how to say that in English, but uh, uh, we call it extension programs or extension project. I, I don't know how to say that in English, but the idea is that we, the university should go outside the university and provide something a, for- a, a kind of outreach. Outreach, yeah. Thank you. I never <laughs> heard about this. So outreach. And so we have this opportunity to increase the statistical literacy of population as, as a whole, our population, because everyone needs to understand more about statistics to live in our uh, society, everyone, including mathematical teachers, including, of course, the teenagers, and of course, uh, the, the, the whole uh, community as well. So. I think that's that's the way we we have to 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 create this project and delivery better statistical literacy for everyone. That's 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 the only way I think we we can improve uh, the general understanding of the population about the usage of the use of uh, statistical methods. Of course, including uh, data science uh, applications. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Wagner. Thank you, Sastri, as well. I, I will put two more questions. Um, here is from Rosario. Thank you, Rosario, for, for, for your question. Uh, she says, do you believe um, that the data analysts sh should simply analyze data without developing new statistical met or mathematical methods and techniques? Uh, and uh, then I will also put a question from Theodore. Theodore is, uh, how really is the inter intersection between statistics and data science? Which one includes the other? I think the, the last question is a very strong question. <laughs> uh, so I, I think both, both of these points you mentioned already, if you, if you could just say a few words of those, it will be, it will be much appreciated. Can you post the first question there again? Uh, just, uh... Yes, of course. Yeah. So that's an important thing about the uh, mathematical background or the statistical background. So it, it, it all depends on what we are training people for, right? Uh, so there's BS, MS, uh, PhD, and then there are certificates, etc. So it all depends on eventually what the person is going to do. Um, so uh, I, I could still think it's a good idea to have a well-rounded education that has the, um, in, in the past, we, we, we used to call the I model, that is you're deep in one subject area. And then they said uh, we should do a T model where not only the depth, you need to have the breadth 
uh, is the uh, top part of the T. And then came the pi model that you need to have two legs and a, a, a bar of the so depth in one area, breadth in the uh, across. And then the second leg now is actually the pi model is about actually computer science or computational science, which includes actually statistics. So, so the thing is that more and more, if we can try and train people in this pi model, uh, that would be ideal. But again, it all depends on what individuals will do. As I mentioned, the business analytics programs are developing uh, business managers who may not know how to do the actual analysis, but they are trained to ask the right questions so that people can collect the data accordingly or what data are out there and what information can we get out of there. So they are actually posing the questions, not doing the analysis. So, so that's one thing, the business analytics. On the other hand, statisticians are, uh, including uh, data scientists, what I would think is that they're also thinking about uh, how to conduct the experiments or what type of data to collect, but also are into visualization, actually converting the data into useful knowledge. So that's where the importance of whether it is inference or uh, logistic regression, whatever it may be, it's important that they're able to kind of use not only the tools, but also develop the tools and also come up with the analysis. It is, it's not no good if we just present the data. You need to be able to convert the data into useful knowledge. And that's where I think the training of the statistics and the data science would be very important. How much mathematics is needed, it depends on whether we are training them to go on for graduate programs and the PhD programs so that they are the ones that actually develop new uh, methods. And there's a, as Patrick said, there's much importance of developing the academic uh, workforce that needs to go into the PhD programs and develop the new methodologies for future because new problems in the future will bring new challenges and new theory, new uh, techniques that need to be developed. So we need that development as well. So there is a kind of demand in each category, whether it is bachelor's or master's or PhD, each has its demand and each will need its own curriculum and it, 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 its own mathematical knowledge, statistical knowledge and computational knowledge. So I, I would see that uh, question about how much mathematics is important depends on at what level uh, you're going to train the people in. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of the uh, intersection between statistics and data science, I mean, there are various pictures of Venn diagrams people have drawn, statistics, computer science, and then maybe the domain knowledge and the intersection being data science and data science is used in various ways, uh, including, as I said, uh, the techniques, whether it is, there's completely a, a different area of uh, data curation, standardization, retrieval, that's a completely different field. And then there are people that are doing actually the visualization, data analysis, um, uh, et cetera. So there are two different things. Uh, uh, database management is separate from uh, data science, but people kind of sometimes mix the words together. Um, so there is intersection. I don't think one is a subset of the other. Wagner, do you want to... So could you put the question again, please? Yes, of course. The first one. Uh, the first one is from Rosaria. Oh yeah, that's that, it's, that's it's, it's in connection of, of what, yeah, yeah. what what you discussed before. Yes. Well, I think I have mentioned something about this uh, in this in our discussion. But uh, the uh, my my opinion is that not everyone that going to work with data analysis needs uh, a strong background in mathematics. So, I, as Sastri said. There is people that are going to work more with data visualizations or 
to create uh, uh, indicators or things like that, that they don't need a really strong mathematical background. They don't need to prove theorems. They don't need to, to know how to create a new technique or something like that. In this sense, I think statistics is a well-established field that has his own statistical methods or statistical research. There is research in statistics. Statistics create new things. For now, as long as, can, as I can see, data science is just a field that uses tools from other fields, like statistical methods, like uh, com 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 computer science methods, like business marketing strategies. So data science just put all this together in a way that you can deliver uh, value for some business. But in statistics, there is a research in itself. You can do your career in statistical research without any real applications, just theoretical statistics, like you can do in mathematics, like you do in physics or in chemistry. So, but in data science, I at least as long as I can see, we don't have this. We have now we have a few journals that that uh, somehow include data science in his name. But if you read these papers in general, they have strong statistics or strong machine learning techniques that comes from computer science or comes from mathematics or sometimes from physics, sometimes for engineers. So uh, data science itself, there is no research Again, it's my opinion, that I, as long as I can see, they, they, they don't have a real research. They serve other fields, in general, business or industry. But the statistics has a, a, a strong research uh, community. So, of course, if you want to go to statistical research, you need a strong mathematical probability, statistical inference background. It's 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 clear but if you go to data science perhaps you don't need so oh, the same background you need perhaps a low level of mathematical understanding the understanding is much more important than know to prove theorems so that's that's my my point here and the other questions the intersection between data science and uh, and statistics i think I, I made it clear now i think data science use statistical methods to solve real problems that's all. Statistics has his own field of uh, research and every, everything. So that's that's my my intersection. But the the one thing that should be clear is that statistical method is not the only tool that data science data data scientists use to solve real problems. They use tools from computer science, from mathematics, from marketing, from administration, from economics, and other arts. So that's that's my my opinion about this intersection between statistics and data science. So I'll just add quickly because we're running out of time. I think it's important that we have to have core computational and communication skills. The communication skills is important in terms of if you have the basics, you should be able to want to communicate with whether it is biologists or zoologists or dentists or uh, marketing people the communication skills are also important for a statistician or a data scientist. At the end of the day, I think one of the things that uh, elephant in the room is we don't want to train people who are just only know buzzwords and not not the basics of it. So that's very, very important it, because a lot of the times uh, some of the programs might be just developing or training people in the buzzwords uh, and that that will not last too long that type of training it may give somebody a certificate but they cannot survive very well in the field finally uh, I, I just want to close this up on, on this topic is statistics is like a knife or data science is like a knife uh, I, I said this before it can be a knife in, in the wrong hands like in the robber uh, mm -hmm. it, it could rob somebody or kill a person right but at the same time, it's in the hands of a skilled surgeon, it could save a life. Or in the hands of a sculptor, could produce a beautiful uh, sculpture. So it's very important that uh, when we teach the statistics or data science, 
we want to make sure that we are also teaching good ethics and good uses of statistics, not misuses of statistics. Um, so I'll stop with that. Thanks, Sastri. We are about to finish. I will just put on a last question. Um, and then I, I will give you the the floor for for final final comments if you have some. Uh, the last question is from uh, Giro Santos. It, it, it says there are hundreds of data programs all over the world and millions of students pursuing this career. Do you do we already have a bubble in this area? What do you think about that? A bubble. I, I imagine that is. Uh, do you have already too many people? thinking about uh, the doing data science? Well, um, and, and probably the idea of the bubble is whether it's going to burst soon too, right? I mean, uh, uh, that there's a pent up demand and therefore there's so uh, every department is developing a, a, a data science program um, and, and, and graduating uh, people. Well, that, that, that's where I think it is true that uh, quality of the program matters at the end of the day, uh, because uh, anybody could put a title of data science or data analytics, etc. So it's important that we see what they are actually training, uh, mm -hmm. because just because somebody has a BS or a certificate does not mean that they have good qualifications, really. So some quality control and management is important on what people are being trained. Um, the data are not going, going anywhere. Uh, they are omnipresent. Uh, it is increasing. But the question is, what can be done now by machines as opposed to the human intervention is changing. So that, that, that requires that we are always thinking about what the next steps are. And that's important because technology is changing faster and faster, right? So, so the thing is that, that um, if you have the fundamentals and critical thinking skills and communication skills, I think the bubble uh, won't burst in that regard. Bur bubble may burst for people that have only picked buzz bu buzzwords. Thanks, Sasha. Would like to add something, Wagner, or, or should we go to the closing remarks? Yeah, well, I just agree with Sasri that the data is just increasing. And we still keep needing to analyze it. And so the, goal, the data is not going anywhere. So I like that. Yeah. I, I, I'm just sharing the Everton's messages related with this. He was searching on LinkedIn and there are 509,000 people who define themselves as data scientists. But of course, uh, what is a data scientist? Uh, do these people really know what to, to do a logistic regression or just a KNN or a clustering? Or uh, they, they do have the background to do the proper data science. So this is, I think, the question. And I think the people that have the knowledge and have the strong background, they will, of course, always be uh, will always have a job and and have uh, the position that they they look for. So we are we are on in the end of the session. I'll just give you one or two minutes if you'd like to add something that you did didn't do before, and then we 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 close. I stay optimistic. Uh, I think there is still a good future for uh, uh, good data scientists or statisticians. Um, again, I would emphasize uh, maybe now four C's, uh, core computational communication and I'll add collaborative skills because you had to collaborate with other scientists or other people. Um, so all four of them are needed. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, I, I just would like to 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 say that uh, I believe the field of data science is just at its beginning, and so we will still keep doing data science for long, long, long time. And so, if you are here and you'd like to become a data scientist, go ahead. 
Thank you. Uh, th th there is actually one, one topic that we could not manage, I would like to discuss, but I suggest everyone to see the round table of yesterday on the job market. The topic is um, soft skills, because we talked a lot about background, strong uh, or soft uh, mathematical background, but we also need to communicate, as Sastri mentioned a few times. Uh, we need to be able to explain whatever we found out to people that not understand statistics. So this kind of communication and and uh, and, and soft skills are also very important for 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 any kind of profession and, and in particular for our profession. So I would like to give the word to Lisandra to to thank the the, the guests and then I I will close the session. I'd like to say thank you for Satri Wagner uh, for accepting our invitation. I love the, our discussion. It is um, essential, fundamental in this moment um, to talk about uh, data science, statistics, to understand the differences. I think uh, uh, clarify a lot for, for once, for attendance. Uh, and uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Paulo. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lisandra, for helping organizing this this uh, roundtable. Uh, it is a, a great, uh, uh, on behalf of the local organizing committee and scientific program <laughs> committee, and and of Lisandra as well. I'd like to thank Sastri, Wagner, and Patrick for taking time for their agendas to to share the the thoughts on on this topic of education with us. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that everyone enjoyed. And uh, uh, we really need to think a little bit about education in statistics and data science. There are many directions that people can go through. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 I think the important thing is that people have to have a, a strong background uh, on whatever they need to, to, to move forward with, uh, with their the direction. Of course, people have to decide first what they want, and then they should build on that. Of course, it is uh, very difficult many times to decide what we want. Uh, I have a very good friend that she tells me many times it's difficult to know what we want. It is easier to decide what we don't want, and that will help. So with that philosophical talk, I say goodbye to all of you. Thanks, Sastri, Wagner, Patrick. Thanks, Lisandra, for helping organize. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.